Right now, Israeli forces say they are conducting a significant operation, including strikes against Hamas targets in Gaza. A CNN team near the border capturing these images of flares lighting up the night sky just a short time ago. And joining me now to discuss is IDF International Spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus. Uh, Colonel, uh, thanks very much for your time. Uh, we've seen a lot of these explosions and fires last night and tonight. What can you tell us about what we're seeing? What are these strikes uh, going after? War continues. Well, first of all, good evening. Thank you for having me. War continues in Gaza. We are striking Hamas and we are going stronghold after stronghold, according to our plan, in a systematic effort to dismantle Hamas from its military capabilities in order to make sure that October 7 never happens again. But specifically, you can't tell us what the, the strikes are about at this point? They are about underground infrastructure that Hamas has in various populated areas. And we have troops on the ground, uh, infantry, armor, combat engineers. They are striking and they are, are also directing fires from the air according to intelligence that they have on the ground and intelligence that is being generated, all in an effort to strike Hamas militants. And there is a special focus on Hamas commanders. And the IDF uh, also says that Israeli forces are ready to shift to, into an offensive mode at any moment in, on the northern uh, border with Lebanon. Can you tell us about that? Well, actually, our posture along the Lebanese border has been very defensive. Uh, we've only been responding to attacks from uh, Hezbollah. Today, an Israeli civilian was killed when an anti-tank missile that was fired from Lebanon by Hezbollah at an Israeli a community, an Israeli civilian was killed and others were wounded, and there's been rocket attacks in Kiryat Shmona. Uh, we are deployed in significant strength and are ready to respond to any escalation coming from Lebanon and continue to warn the state of Lebanon and Hezbollah that it would not be in their interest to escalate the situation. And Colonel, all weekend long we've seen images of carnage uh, in Gaza. Uh, the uh, civilian death toll appears to be going up uh, with uh, every uh, Israeli strike inside of Gaza. I know you've said and your, your counterparts have said that you're, you're not targeting civilians. You're doing your best not to target civilians. But yet there are uh, scores of civilian casualties. Um, I, I'm wondering at, at what point do you say these strikes have accomplished all that they can accomplish and you have to shift to a more ground based offensive inside of Gaza to make sure that you're not causing uh, an excessive number of civilian casualties. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we have said and we will continue to say that we are not fighting against the civilian population. They are not our enemy. Hamas is. And the sad reality and the reason behind all of this really sad footage that we see coming out of Gaza, it's not Israeli activity. It's the fact that Hamas systematically, systematically hides behind those civilians. You know, there's an ongoing operation to try to evacuate Palestinian civilians from northern Gaza. More than 800,000 have already made the smart decision to do so. We've opened specific humanitarian corridors yesterday and today for the continued um, unhindered flow of the Palestinian civilians south to safer areas. There is water in the south. There is access to food and medicine in the south. And it is definitely a safer and the safest area to be in the Gaza Strip. And we continue to call on the population to move south. We don't want them in the battlefield and we don't want them in harm's way. We want Hamas to stand up and fight. And we are going to take the battle to Hamas. And we really hope that the civilian population won't continue to be held by Hamas as human shields. And you say you want the civilians to move south uh, so they're out of harm's way. Wouldn't a humanitarian pause uh, facilitate that, uh, help in that effort? Why, why stand against that idea of a humanitarian pause right now? Why not be open to something temporary so civilians can safely get out of these areas? I, I, I totally agree, and that's what I said. We've done that twice in two days. Yesterday and today, there were humanitarian corridors. We opened up an area along Salah Adin Road, which is the main road, and we told the Palestinians before, listen, between 10 and 2, there's going to be a pause, and we will facilitate the free and unhindered movement from the north, 
south of Wadi Gaza so that you can be in relative safety. Take your belongings, take your family and go. We have done this twice. We have issued uh, okay. warnings and, and statements. It is Current. exactly what we're doing. Okay, Kern, and, and forgive me for interrupting, but I, I just want to make sure because the terminology is important to get right here. Are you saying that the IDF did have what you consider to be a humanitarian pause this weekend, as had been requested by the Biden administration, or is this, is this your own version of a humanitarian pause? Can you just clarify that? Yeah, I will happily clarify. Yesterday and today, for many hours, with prior notice and warning, we facilitated, we stopped firing in certain areas of northern Gaza, which is the main combat area, and we called on Palestinians to move south. Many did, not enough. More than 800,000 have left northern Gaza, which is good, but we want all of the civilians to be out of harm's way, and we did so not once, but twice, in order to facilitate more. The sad reality is that even these efforts were hindered by Hamas, who started firing at the convoys and at Israeli troops in that area. And then, unfortunately, that humanitarian window was uh, eventually closed. But the bottom line is, I think that we don't only talk the talk, but we actually do it on the ground. And we have, for two days in a row, facilitated uh, safe access and safe transit of Palestinian civilians. I understand it is underreported because perhaps it doesn't go according to the narrative, but we are trying to get civilians well, that's what I'm out trying of to the ask you, and, and that's why I'm trying to ask to get that clarification. And so are you saying that these humanitarian windows uh, that were opened up over the weekend, do they meet uh, to the satisfaction of the Biden administration, what they were calling for and having some kind of pause to facilitate uh, the movement of uh, civilians out of harm's way? Do you have confirmation from the Biden administration that, OK, thank you for doing that? Or has it not reached that level yet? I don't know exactly how the administration feels about it. I know that we are doing real, honest efforts to get civilians out of the battlefield. Not only are we telling them where to go, but we are also helping in creating much better humanitarian conditions in the South, which is where we're telling people to go. There's less combat there. There is access to water, by the way, from Israel as well. We've opened the taps from our side, and there's an inflow of goods. More and more trucks, humanitarian trucks, come in every day to the south. There's a humanitarian zone. And at the end of the day, it's the best thing for civilians to do, and we are facilitating it, honestly, right. because we want a battlefield where we can face Hamas and make sure that we engage them and them only, and beat them on the battlefield to make sure that never again will they be able to attack Israel. All right, Colonel Conricus, thank you very much for your time.